Hey everyone, today we'll be looking at Dean Audio's HTA200. The HTA200 is a hybrid tube amplifier, HTA, with 200 watts of total power into 4 ohms, which means 100 watts into 8 ohms or 50 watts per channel on an 8 ohm load. I'll give you my impressions of this amplifier on my speakers. I tested the HTA200 out on two sets of speakers. First on a pair of GR Research XLS Encores, which are 86 dB sensitive, and on my custom three-way with a sensitivity of 93 dB. As for build, the amplifier is pretty nice. Nice metal housing. The covers on the transformers are metal, as are what appears to be aluminum guards on the tubes. They do get nice and warm, so I wouldn't want to touch these guys. Really cool VU meters. And then you have your input settings down here at the bottom. I have it set to aux. I wish this part was dimmable. It'd be nice if they had a little rotary dimmer on the lights. I feel at nighttime they can be a little bright. You do have a set of tone controls. I tested a couple ways, leaving the bass alone. And I did play with the treble. On the rear, you have a couple of digital ins for the built-in DAC on this unit. You have a coaxial and a toss link. And it does have a sub out in case you wanted to pair it with a powered subwoofer, which I think would be a good option if you're working with bookshelf speakers like the XLS Encores. On this unit, you definitely have to break it in for a little bit. My first listening impressions were horrible. I set the unit up, plugged it in, put some audio through it, and I did not like anything I was hearing. I found the sound to be harsh, not smooth at all, very spiky, and the bass was very uncontrolled. But after about a week of burning and listening, the sound became much sweeter. I do have to say I did enjoy the sound much better pairing the HTA200 and the GR Research XLS Encores. I feel that the highs are a little more controlled when you have a soft dome tweeter as opposed to my main speakers that have the ribbon super tweeter. I feel on the ribbon super tweeter, distortion does peak out. It can't quite control that ribbon. With the soft dome tweeters on the XLS Encores, you just get a much easier to listen to experience. I listen to a few volume levels starting at around 50 decibels up to 75 decibels. I usually don't like to listen to higher than 75 decibels. When the amplifier is cranked up, you definitely have a fun experience. You do have a lot of that tubiness that comes out, the holographic image. The HCA200 does have a tube preamp, but the output is through a class AB power amp. And I don't know if it's the tube preamp that's causing the issue with the bass or the power amp itself, but I can't say the bass isn't my favorite part of this amplifier. I wouldn't call it sloppy, but I will say it is uncontrolled. I did a direct AB comparison and I compared it to one of my two IOTA VX monoblocks. In my system, I usually run a pair of IOTA VX PA3s in mono mode. In this case, to compare watts to watts, I disconnected one of the mono blocks and switched the PA3 into stereo mode, that pumping out 50 watts per channel in 8 ohms, same as the HTA200. My preference definitely was to the IOTA VX. I found that the bass was much more accurate and controlled. It just stopped when you wanted to stop and went when you wanted to go. You did have a little sharper kick to it. With the HTA200, you got a little extra reverb and you didn't get quite all the texture of the bass and it did make the room load up a little more. Maybe a little better for movies, but for music, I definitely enjoyed the sound of the IOTA VX, which is also a class AB amplifier. Although the value of the HTA200 can be understated, this unit preamp, DAC, and power amp coming in at around $350 versus one IOTA VX coming in at around $500 where you still have to add your own DAC and preamp. I tested the internal DAC by running a digital signal for my streamer, the Cambridge Audio 851N, compared to just pushing the analog signal from my DAC over to the amplifier. The DAC in the Cambridge was far superior, much smoother, and more analog-like. You do get a little digital choppiness on the 16-bit DAC that's included, but I think it's more of a convenience feature if you want to hook up your TV or something simple. I don't think it's meant for that dedicated hi-fi experience in a price point at $350. This unit's more about that tube sound. I had a few friends over on the weekend and they gave me their impressions and I'll share with you I'm in my mid 40s although my ears are still pretty good still catching up to around 17.6 kilohertz. My friends who were in their 20s were much more impressed with the HTA's ability to have that sound wrap around them giving them the holographic image. They weren't as concerned about the looser bass that the HT has. Whereas my preference at this point of my journey is definitely more towards accuracy and bass. I really do love it when the bass stops and goes when it has to. It's just a different feeling, more enjoyable for myself. I'll give you a small pro and cons list for this amplifier. The pros are you definitely get a good amount of power. 100 watts is sufficient for quite a good range of speakers if you're not going to throw a party with 200 people in the room. It powered the XLS Encores just fine, as well as my custom speakers. I didn't feel that the amplifier was underpowered at all. Another pro is the build quality. It's definitely built solid. 
There's also the value with the built-in deck for convenience. If you can put a little more budget into an external deck, you'd be very happy with something like a Toppings E32 or higher. The next pro is the aesthetic. It's objectively very attractive in a kind of a retro style. I love the little VU meters that do increase as the power increases. And that sub out, that sub out is incredibly useful. If you're using a couple of bookshelf speakers that go down to maybe about 60 Hertz, you can add on a little powered sub and have a full range system. As for the cons, again, the bass control really isn't there for me. I'd like a little better controlled bass. I found that it didn't do great with a ribbon tweeter. I felt it to be a little harsh on the upper frequencies. Not an issue with soft dome tweeters. And then there's noise. With the IOTA VX, even when I had both units in mono, I get literally zero noise coming out of these speakers. And I'm talking about a planar magnetic and a ribbon super tweeter. When I had the Dayton audio plugged in, in the daytime with regular ambiance around the house, you really can't pick it up. But as soon as it gets dark and people go in their homes and you have the quietness outside, you can definitely hear the static in the speakers. Something that I do not have with the IOTA VXs. And transformer hum. Sitting here about three feet away from the transformers, I can hear that hum. When I'm at my seating position on my couch around eight feet, I won't hear it in the daytime, but I can still hear it at night. It's very subtle, but it is there. And I don't know if it's just this particular unit that has that transformer hum, but if you decide to give this amplifier a try, please comment down below and let me know if it's something you experience. And then there's a final con, which would be the remote control. The remote control has to be the cheapest remote I've seen in quite a while. I definitely would pay extra for a nicer control. Very plasticky feeling. I don't think it'll last six months. I purchased this unit strictly out of curiosity, but I will say it'll be going back. And it isn't the noise that I'm disappointed with. I don't mind the noise. I can go beyond that, but it's just the lack of the bass control that doesn't work for me. I would definitely still recommend this amplifier for somebody who has a pair of bookshelf speakers and wants that tube sound and likes the aesthetic of this amp. All in all, it's a nice unit. The things that I would like to see would be, it'd be nice if Dayton Audio would consider making this unit fully analog and pull out the DAC and just keep the preamp and the power amp and have a second chassis the same size that you can stack, something like the shit stacks and have a digital box at the bottom with a DAC and a streamer. I think that would give you a little more flexibility if somebody's trying to grow with this amplifier. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. And I'll see you on the next one.